Welcome back boys and girls to ITTV's lesson of Form 2 Mathematics. We are right now in chapter 3 called Algebraic Expressions. But before we get deeper into algebraic expressions, let's now look about algebraic terms. In algebraic terms, there is something known as unknowns. So what are these unknowns? Unknowns can be symbols or alphabets which are used for an unknown. Now, say for example, I ask you the mass of an orange. So you have orange fruit, but you don't know what's the mass. So we can put an alphabet as a symbol for it. Now, say for example, we can say that X represents the mass of an orange. You see, because the mass of an orange is an unknown. We don't know what's the mass of an orange, so we can simply make X to represent the mass of an orange. In this case, we are using an alphabet. Or maybe something like this. Y can represent the number of tickets sold. Ah, this could be another example. Or sometimes we can use a symbol. There are lots of symbols like beta, alpha, but something that's quite simple will be this. This is something that you're going to keep seeing. Now this is a symbol called theta. Now say for example, theta represents the smallest angle. Now you see boys and girls, theta is usually used for angles. So it could be the smallest angle anywhere. Maybe say for example, in a triangle. Ah. Therefore now, you understand what are terms. Terms for an unknown can be X, Y, Z, P, Q, whatever alphabet, or symbols such as theta, alpha, beta, psi, phi, whatever it is. Okay? All right. Now, the coefficient of an unknown is the other factors in that algebraic term. For instance, for the algebraic term 3x squared y, the coefficient of y is 3x squared. Whereas, the coefficient of xy is 3x and so on. But students, remember that we cannot say that the coefficient of 3 is x squared y. Why can't we say that? Because 3 is a constant, it is not an unknown. Okay? Now, let's carry on. Like terms are terms with the same unknown, such as 3ab, half ab, and negative 2ba. These are all like terms because the unknown of these terms are only a and b. Now, boys and girls, you have to understand that if I write ab or ba, I'm referring to the same unknowns, right? So it will still be called as like terms. Conversely, unlike terms are terms with different unknowns, such as 3ab, negative 2a square b, and 1 over 4ab square. These are unlike terms. Why do we call them unlike terms? Because although there is an a and a b there, but you have to check out the power of the a and the b. In one case, we've got a square b. In another, we have got a b square. Therefore, a square and a are different unknowns, right? An algebraic expression is made up of a combination of algebraic terms with the addition or subtraction signs in them. The following example is an algebraic expression with three unknowns, 2xy plus 5yz. Therefore, there are three unknowns which are x, y, and z. Make sure you understand that xy and yz are not the unknowns. There are three different alphabets there, x, y, and z. Okay now boys and girls, so I'm going to write down a few mathematical statements for you or algebraic terms and I want you to find out how many unknowns are there. Let's start with something simple. 2a plus 5. How many unknowns are here? 1. You see? A is the only unknown. These are numbers, okay? Now I'll give you another one. And this one, 4m 
minus 2n plus 3mn. How many unknowns are there here? Some say there are two, some say there are three. So let's see what is it. We've got alphabet M, N, M, N. Now remember that the type of alphabet refers to one unknown. M, M. Both of these are considered as one unknown. These two are considered as one unknown. So how many alphabets do you actually see? How many different types of alphabets you see? Two, right? Therefore, two unknowns. Here you've got one unknown. Okay? So I think with this, it's kind of easy. You understand it. Let's move on. The number of terms in an algebraic expression is being determined by the number of terms separated by plus and or minus signs only. You can see the table below shows you an example of the number of terms in the algebraic expressions. In the first algebraic expression we have 3a minus 4b plus 5. We have got three terms with two unknowns. So you understand that terms are actually the number of terms that are separated by a minus or a plus sign. Let's take a look at the next. The next example is negative half A, B, C, D, E. Now this is considered as one term only. Why? Because the terms are not separated by the minus and plus signs. What about the third one? 2x over 5y. How many terms do we have here? One term as well. Because the whole thing is one fraction. However, in example number one, we've had three terms with two unknowns. Example number two, we had one term but five unknowns. But in example number three, we had one term with two unknowns. When an algebraic expression undergoes multiplication or division, every term in the expression is multiplied or divided by that factor. To better understand it, I will give you this example. Say, for example, I have 3a, b plus 4c. And I'm asking you to expand this. How would you expand this? Now, check this out. We've got a term that is factorized out here. We've got a term here. We've got another term here. So inside the bracket, we've got two terms, right? So if you're going to open this bracket up, the bracket refers to multiply, right? Now, each of the term has to be multiplied by 3a. Each of the term. Thus, giving us an answer of 3ab. 3a multiplied by b is 3ab plus remains. 3a multiplied by 4c number and number is multiplied to give you 12 unknown and unknown is written now a c now this is the answer now since you can do this all right let's pick out an example that i'm going to give you which is a bit more challenging and let's see whether you can solve it or not now the following example is negative 6st plus 8s square plus 4st squared divided by 2st. Now I want you to work on it and I want you to try to get the solution and then I will help you to do with it. Boys and girls, this is the question that I gave you and now let's try to solve them. I will do it step by step really slowly so that you can follow me. Now, look at the numerators. We've got three and the denominator is common. That means one denominator for all three. That means I can open them up into becoming like this. Negative 6st over 2st plus 8s square over 2st plus again 4st square over 2st. Now, Use the cancellation technique. On top and down, numerator and denominator, whatever is common, cancel them off. So now I'm going to do one by one. I've got two, I've got six. I can divide these two by two, I get one. Six also must divide by two, I will get 
3. S and S is cancelled, P and T is cancelled. Let's go one by one. 1, 4. Do you understand why? 2 divided by 2, 8 divided by 2, 4. S is cancelled, but be very careful. S square means there are two S's here. S times S. There is only one S down here, so I've cut one off. That means the other one is cut off, leaving me with a single S alphabet. Cannot do anything with the T, no cancellation. Let's take a look at the third term. Divide by 2, get 1. Divide by 2, you get 2. There is one S here, one S here cancel. There is one T down here. That means one of the T on top is cancelled. Whatever we have now, let's rewrite them back. We've got negative 3 over 1. I'm not going to write it down. Plus 4S over T. 4S over T. Plus again with, I've got 2T here. Divide by a number 1 here. So 2T. Boys and girls, voila. This is your answer. Done? Now, are you ready for one last example? Okay, let's see one last example. Now, the next example I'm giving you is negative P, 2 minus Q, in bracket, minus with Q, P minus 3, in bracket. Take your time and solve them before I give you the answer. So, boys and girls, I hope you've already done your work and now it's time for us to check whether your solution is right or wrong. So I'm going to do it slowly, so pay attention, okay? Now, whenever you see this, as we have already practiced earlier, remember that you've got to multiply to both the terms found in the bracket. Both the terms, do not omit one of them, okay? So P has got to multiply with the two and it's also got to multiply with the Q. But then, because there are negative numbers involved here, or negative unknowns involved, I want you to understand that if there is an unknown or a number, and in front of it, there is a sign, negative or positive, you make sure that you understand that the sign belongs to it. Same case here, there is a minus sign in front, therefore this sign belongs to the Q. Which means, it's got to be negative P, multiply by 2, not P times Q or P times 2. It's got to be negative P multiply by 2, negative P multiply by negative Q. So let's do it now. Negative P and 2. When you multiply it, you will get negative 2P. Negative P and negative Q. Negative, negative, positive, PQ. Very good. Now the same thing here, as I told you, the sign belongs to the Q, the sign belongs to the 3. Therefore, multiply independently to both the terms, thus giving you negative QP. Negative Q multiplied by negative 3 will give you positive 3Q. Now, boys and girls, I want you to understand one thing. If I write a, B, it is same to B, A. It's the same thing. A times B equals to B multiplied by A. In the same way, P, Q is the same as Q, P. So usually what we do is we follow a common rule. Now this common rule tells us to logically put the alphabets in alphabetical order. So instead of writing BA, I would prefer if you wrote it AB, or instead of QP, better to write PQ. Follow the alphabetical chronology, okay? Now let's finish this up. The next step is probably one of the most easiest thing to do. Watch. Collect them who have the same types of unknown, okay? The same types of unknown, collect. PQ, QP refers to PQ, it's the same thing positive PQ minus with PQ. So what happens? Cancelled off already, right? It's like positive 1 minus 1. 0, right? Done. 
So what's left here is negative 2p plus 3q. And that's the answer. You cannot do anything anymore. Now sometimes I refer to students this method and students keep asking me, Sir, my answer is this, 3q minus 2p. Am I correct? Like I said, what you have just done is take this term and you have shuffled in front. So this is also correct, this is also correct, okay? Therefore, with this, we wind up this part of our lesson. So till we meet again in the next lesson, make sure keep on practicing and thank you for watching ITTV.